too. Um, there's one more trade rumor, Eric, and I wanted to, I had to, had to send this one your way and talk to you about this because I know, you know, I like to give you opportunities to, to laugh and to get at the nets. Um, but recently within like the last two days, there's been a lot of heat heating up, uh, talking about maybe James Harden possibly going to the nets, with some kind of trade package involving Karis LeVert, uh, Torian Prince, Jared Allen and my main man Spencer Dimwitty. Um, it's it's crazy to even think about James Harden being on the Nets with Kyrie and and, and Kevin Durant, but it's definitely possible. Um, what do you think about that trade? If it happens, what does that mean? So on the surface, um, I mean it's just a crazy trade to even think about. Uh, pairing those three guys up together to try to dominate the East. And I think on paper, it looks pretty cut and dry that they probably would be the best team. But I would still have a lot of concerns with it. Um, as we talked about before, the biggest issue with this Nets team, even as, as they're currently constructed, is going to be chemistry. You know, how are they going to be able to gel? KD and Kyrie have yet to play a game together. You've got a new head coach. You've got a coaching staff. Um, that has, doesn't have a history of winning anything. You know, D'Antoni's been to some playoffs and, and he's had a couple of deep playoff runs, but he's never won anything. He's your lead assistant. They don't have a defensive-minded assistant on that team, so that's another thing to worry about. But ultimately, it would be the chemistry. You know, is, is Kyrie going to be comfortable being the third option on his team? Because we know if you get Harden, Harden's your number two guy. And yeah. Harden, Harden and KD are probably the best two scorers in the NBA. So everything's going to run through them. Is Kyrie going to be comfortable being a guy who's got to spot up and shoot and get his opportunities when those guys aren't on the floor? But I want to bring up an a, a interesting uh, trade situation to this because I was thinking about it as we were going over the rundown. And um, I talked about it recently on the Sanchez show where I said, if I'm Houston, I'm not looking to flip Westbrook. I should be looking to flip Harden because Houston is no closer to a title now than they have been over the last five years. And that's not going to change by next year either. Harden's 31. So if you're, if anything, I think this is the perfect time to do it. You move him now, you get as many trade uh, pieces back, whether it's multiple draft picks or multiple starters. But if I'm the Nets, and, and I'm going to, for this exercise, you're going to be the pseudo GM of the Nets, all right? If, if, I'm the, if, if you're the GM, would you open up Houston open up their mind to an idea of let's do a three team trade where we end up with Harden, but I send you Kyrie and we will find a team to take Westbrook off your hands. If you're the Nets, I think you try to get rid of Kyrie in the deal to get Harden because Harden and KD make way more sense than Harden, KD and Kyrie. Okay. So it, it does make more sense. And again, I'm, you know, I'm wondering, and when I when I started to hit the trade room, pick up steam, Harden is extremely ball dominant. Is he going to 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 change his game to come to the Nets and play? And then Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving are also ball dominant. Now they don't hold on to the ball as long as James Harden does, but they are two guys that their their game is centered on them having the ball in their hand and being being able to create. It's not like Kyrie is a pass first point guard. He's a scorer. He's he's more of the new age point guard, what a point guard is now, which is you know more of the combo guard kind of thing. So on 2K, I'm taking the Nets all day. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't care about the, about that else. But in real life, I you know what I'm saying I I would have to see them make it work. Um, the only thing with trading Kyrie though is that's. Durant wanted to come to Brooklyn anyway, so I don't know if Durant would be okay with them trading Kyrie. That would be my only issue with that. Um, now, what are you going to get in return for Kyrie if I do send Kyrie somewhere? Well, the, the my my thinking on it would be to try to incorporate a third team that would take Russell Westbrook off Houston's hands, and then it makes sense for them to say, "All right, you know what? Send us Kyrie." Because if if I'm if this is the way I look at it. I think Russ, Russ, Russell Westbrook has potential only in certain landing spots. His contract, his age don't fit well in every situation. We know that, exactly. right? Yes. So there are certain situations that make sense. 
the Knicks, we know why it makes sense. The Knicks are star deprived and they, they just want a big name at this point as they try to rebuild. I'm going to the Knicks. Right. It makes sense. Though I don't want him there. I'm be honest. As a Knicks fan, I don't want him because I just think at this point, again, 32 years old with $40 million owed to him over the next three seasons, it's just a crazy – unless we're not giving up anything. I'm be honest. If we're not giving up anything, then so what? Well, but if they, I got to give – One of the trades that I saw, the potential – it was – like uh, Kevin Knox, Bobby Portis, um, who was the other guy? Uh, Frank, Frank, French Frank. Frank, yeah, Frank, and you, you probably would have to. Uh, uh, if that's the case, you can have all of those guys. Yeah, yeah. If, 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 if you know, I, I mean, uh, I think Knox. The, the jury's still out on Knox. I'm not a fan of Frank, and Bobby Portis is an expiring contract, so he's not going to be part of the long term plans here anyway. That's what I'm saying. Anything? Knox is a little trickier. I think Knox is a little trickier because the Knicks still have high aspirations for him. They brought in an assistant coach who worked with him in Kentucky. So I ha I, I have a feeling that they're going to try to at least give Knox one more year. He's still very young. He came into the league at 19, so he's only 21 years old. And to give up on him so early, I think if you're the Knicks, is like if we're giving up on him, we got to be sure about bringing in Russell Westbrook. Because I don't want to give up on him and then he turns into Trevor Ariza somewhere else and we like, man, we gave up a quality guy for an aging star. But for Russell, the Knicks make sense. I think Orlando makes sense. They've been to AFC two years in a row. They need a star. I think Chicago makes sense. Billy Donovan was his coach in OKC. You know, they need a star so that they could try to crack through to the playoffs. Some locations make sense. For the most part, other teams don't. But if you're Houston, I would much rather take Kyrie and a bunch of pieces from other teams and dump all those salaries of Harden and Westbrook and start over. Now, Houston, Houston would have to be on board and say, you know what? Yeah, we like that idea. Let's try to find a third team. But it's purely thinking from the Nets, as you said, with three ball dominant guys, I just don't see how this is going to work. Like, we know already that Kyrie and, and KD are very moody guys. KD has played with James Harden, so I'm sure they have a relationship and they can make it work. But Kyrie knows he's going to be the odd man out. He's going to be the one standing around waiting for somebody to pass him the ball. And then once that happens. Yeah. So if I'm the Nets, I'm like, man, you know what? I, I'd rather go forward with KD and Kyrie. I mean, KD and Harden, get rid of Kyrie, and maybe even keep Karis LeVert. I don't want to give up Karis, and I don't want to give up Spencer Dinwiddie. I'm going to be honest. That's my guy. Yeah. And 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 the, the, the rumor that they're talking about, I think Jared Allen's included in that deal. Yes. So – if, if I'm the Nets, I'm like, man, as, as much as I might like Harden, and I'm sure D'Antoni's probably pitching for him right now behind the scenes, those are three quality young guys that I got to give up, and I'm hoping this thing works. If this thing doesn't work and it blows up in our face, we're going to look back and be like, why, why the hell did we give up on those young guys so quick when we had a good team already? Well, you know, and I think with the Nets, they're kind of also looking at this thing as a win now kind of a, of a situation as well. Um, I want to, so I want to go back to, because we kind of felt the same, we felt the same way about Grant going to, OK, uh, to go state and it, and it did work out, but it was, there's one difference. And the difference is Clay Thompson is somebody that could score 25 a game, but he doesn't need the ball in his hands to score 25 points. A game. All three of these guys need the ball in their hands to score 25 points a game. So that's why I'm like, and, and again, y'all, you know, you guys at home know I'm the Nets fan on the show. I'm all for Brooklyn, you know what I'm saying, doing their thing. But I got to actually, I'd have to see that in, in the works and actually, you know what I'm saying, happen and actually work out. Because even with, yeah, you know, we know Kevin Durant and James Harden have a, have a, a good relationship. They play together in OKC. However, that was... Six man of the year, James Harden, not MVP James Harden, who is is can arguably be a top five player, maybe even a top three player in this league. That's two different James Hardens. So back then, where it was like, you know, yeah, maybe I might take a, you know, I'm gonna take a back seat to, to Kevin Durant then, but you know, in in in, in, in James James Harden in his own right could be the number one guy on that team. You know what I'm saying? So it's 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 going to be. A lot, and I get, I you know, I see the connection to the D'Antoni, and you know, James Harden has flourished underneath James D'Antoni. They haven't won, but individually, he became an MVP under D'Antoni. He led the league in assists one year under D'Antoni, and we saw James Harden's game elevate 
going into you know from the, making a transition from from OKC to to Houston. We saw again because again that was six man James Harden. We saw starting five MVP All NBA James Harden in Houston. So you're gonna bring that now to to to, to try to mesh with Kevin Durant and then you know Kyrie who's a superstar in his own right. You know, and, and 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 I could argue. Well, listen, yeah, you good. You know, you regular season great, James. And, I, and I'm saying, if I'm Kyrie, you regular season great, James. But we know in, in the playoffs, you know, what I'm saying only two of us over here got rings, and I'm one of them. You know, what I'm saying. So, I mean, you yeah, know? Kyrie could make that case. And and don't get me wrong, we can't take away from what he contributed to Cleveland winning their first championship. But as we, as you and I both said, you take away those three years that Kyrie played with LeBron. He has yet to show us anything close to what he did then. Yeah, but that's no matter how we feel. Realistic. No, no, but right, but, but no matter how we feel, right, no matter how we feel about James Harden, James Harden has been to multiple Western Conference Finals in the West, obviously in the West, but he at least has gotten his team to points of of some some success by being the star player. We have yet to see Kyrie ever do that. So. I don't know if if it can work. I, I I'm, I'm be honest. I just don't think there there are multiple reasons that this won't work. As we talk about whether it's ball dominant, who's gonna feel slighted by what? Is Dan Tony gonna cater more towards James Harden than he is Kyrie? You know, Steve Nash and KD have a relationship from Golden State. So how does that gonna work out? Um, all these different dynamics. They brought in Royal Ivy on the coaching staff, who's a good friend of KD's as well. So it's like they're really catering to what KD wants here, as they should. He is the star there. Yeah. Right. But to me, there are several differences between this and what happened in Golden State. And I'm glad you brought up Golden State because too many times that when these super teams are put together, they rarely r- win year one. It's normally a year of them adjusting to each other before they figure it out. The difference with Golden State, like you said, Clay was very low maintenance. I don't need the ball in my hands. I'll run off a bunch of screens. And if you find me open, guess what? I'm going to knock down his three. Oh, also, by the way, I'm also a first team all defensive player on the other end, right? Draymond, for as limited as Draymond is, Draymond was perfect for those guys. A guy who could play the four or the five. If he went small, he could handle the ball a little bit. Again, low maintenance. You ain't got to run no offense for him. But one of the other reasons why I really worked in Golden State was they had already won a championship. They had already been to -to back-to-back finals. So that team already had an identity. All KD had to do is just figure out his place within that team. They still ran a lot of screen and rolls. They still ran a lot of action with, with guys running off the baseline to get open threes. But in the last six minutes of the game, we just go and run ISO with KD because there's nobody who can stop him. What is the Nets identity? And that's what I'm that's what I would be scared of with having these three guys because the two main guys haven't even played together. So we don't even know what that identity is. Now you want to throw Harden in, who is a, like you said, high usage player who is used to working in isolation. Harden ain't running off no screens. Harden ain't, ain't, ain't running the baseline trying to get open. He want the ball in his hands at the top of the key. And if he, if him and Chris Paul soured on each other, how long will it take between him and Kyrie sour? Yeah, because they both need that need, need, need the ball. So I, yeah, that's why that's why I say. I mean, it, it's you got you can either this thing can either be championship Tinseltown, or this can be the worst possible decision. You could have ever made in in, in this case. Um, either way, like I said, um, the trades don't officially open up until tomorrow. But you know what? But I wouldn't be surprised if December twenty second, when the season starts, if neither Russell Westbrook or James Harden are are in Houston. I think, well, I agree. You know I saying? agree because I think I think I think with Houston, like you said, you know they understand like. Are they winning the championship this year with the roster the way it is? Even if you trade Westbrook, like, are you are you going to get a a legitimate haul in return that's going to push Houston past the Lakers, the Clippers, Golden State will be back this year. The Nuggets are going to be better, especially you know now with Michael Porter Jr. getting a feel for the league and him and him turning into something like, you know, he had, he had a pretty good run. He had his spots, you know what I'm saying? But again, we're talking about him. This is his first time really getting out there. So now coming back, going into, you know what I'm saying? Making a deep run into the playoffs with that Nuggets team. They're young. They're going to get even better. Are they, are they competing with that roster? You know what I mean? So this, there's so much going on to where it's like, it might just be time. 
tried this thing with Harden for years. It didn't work. We brought Chris Paul in once. We brought Dwight Howard in once. We brought Melo in. We brought Westbrook in, and it still hasn't gotten us. Maybe we got to blow this whole thing up and just start from scratch and do what OKC's doing. Try to get a bunch of picks. Try to get, you know, a, a bunch of starters. You know, and I think for, for Houston, I think it does make a lot of sense. If you could get Dimwitty, Allen, Levert, <laughs> and Torian Prince, you know what I'm saying? Those are all young guys that are that are under 28 years old. So you right. got time with those guys to kind of build. And then if you can get you get rid of with a Westbrook on the on, on the other side, especially you know what I'm saying, if you can't get if you can't get Kevin Knox, who is still young. You know what I mean? And then you can get a Portis, who's a feasible, you know, big man, and and, and maybe a draft pick or another piece or two to go along with that. You know, it might actually benefit them a little bit, a little bit more. Um, but again, I wouldn't be surprised if neither one of those guys is playing for 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 Houston. Um, NBA, well, yeah, you know, but, uh, we we uh, and I'll make it quick there. Yeah, I I agree. I think. I wouldn't be surprised if both those guys get traded as you talked about and you laid out the scenarios. Um, Houston knows the, their window was closed already. Um, you know, they were the, the fourth seed this year, but they really weren't the fourth best team in the West. Uh, Golden State comes back next year. I think Portland's going to be just as good next year. And Denver and Utah are, are young teams that are starting to get better. So Houston's on a decline, and this is the time to move on. Yeah. Smush Parker here, formerly up to Los Angeles Lakers. And you are now tuned into Real Fans, Real Talk. Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought. Real 